What is the limit to, or better still, can Nigeria ever put an end to profligacy? Really, can it? Is it Nigeria's disappointing participation at the 2024 Paris Olympics another classic display of profligate wastes without concomitant results? Don't even bother wondering why I dare ask that question. For the record, Nigeria went to the two weeks Olympics with an 88-man contingent and a hefty budget of 12 billion naira only to return home, tails tucked in between the legs, not a single medal, not one single podium finish. And for the Minister of Sport to mouth a trite and lame excuse of late preparation. But there was no late preparation in signing off 12 billion naira for an Olympic outing that just went in the fashion of profligate spending. Will it be out of place to state that the 2024 Paris Olympics, beyond being a sportsmanly disappointment, was more of a glaring indication of the nation's broader systemic issues? Why do we take such obvious profligacy for granted? Why is every situation, event or circumstance, domestic or international, an opportunity to cash out, plunder, loot and waste the public treasury? In the recent past, those called up to serve in the committee for the simple task of fixing wage of workers took about one year. They asked initially for one billion naira for the committee work, but cut down two and got 500 million naira, and yet couldn't get the job done amidst the discomfort of serial strikes by dissatisfied labor. Also in the recent past, the nation is yet to shake off the shame, sham, and scandalous conduct of the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, where social investment funds meant for the weak disadvantaged and vulnerable strata of the citizenry were fretted away. Isn't it right before the public lay that the system has always budgeted in double-digit billions for serial failed attempts at constitutional review only to watch how easy it really is to amend the constitution when it suits the whims of individuals as was the case in the unprecedented fast track passage and signing of the act to revert to the old national anthem? Also, what do we make of a situation where officials allegedly converted the sanctity of a religious outing of Hajj into a scandal of lack of accountability with respect to monies budgeted as interventionist support for the pilgrims? It just came to public attention that compared to the just $1.6 billion funding of Africa's longest transnational highway, stretching over 10,000 kilometers between Cairo in Egypt and Cape Town in South Africa, Nigeria is committing a whooping sum of over $16 billion to a non-priority Lagos Calabar highway. How more ridiculous and profligate can things be? Why have we pursued a serial pattern of going to every conceivable international forum with some of the largest and most bloated teams at great cost only to fail to secure even the minimal commitment in our national interest? Why is Nigeria often a subject of calculated snare and ridicule when we take and display profligate tendencies by sending unnecessarily large number of state officials to international fora without concomitant positive impact? Quite a number of these international outings are merely for plastic appearances, show off without substance nor benefits, but officials who only lavishly and frivolously splash resources on such. Also, why is it that in some instances, with real tangible basis, like the Olympics, we end up face flat with little or no enduring results because officials 
have eyes and minds on the money they rake in than on the greater national goal and interest. In the same vein, why is the NNPC demanding 4.71 trillion Naira refund to settle for fuel imports for August 2023 and July 2024 when every drop of petrol Nigerians used within that period was paid for to the last cobble in the absence of subsidy? Is this another case of profligate and obvious antique to shortchange our commonwealth? How do we explain the seeming pathological inability to resist the pathetic temptation to convert every official engagement to plunder and for profligate spending? At every turn, every bend, every corner, it has always been to cash out, inflate, and bloat almost every conceivable public expenditure. All this happening when the leadership is asking the people to sacrifice while its profligacy is laced with impunity and reckless fear. Isn't that crass contradiction? So, I return to the startup question. What is the limit? Or better still, can Nigeria ever put an end to profligacy? Really, can it? It may sound simplistic, but the question is so, so germane.